Only three months ago, Apple released their top tier M1 chip, the M1 Ultra, and already Apple is making the switch to the next gen M2 SoCs for the entry level. The first products to ship with the new M2 chip will be the redesigned MacBook Air and the 13 inch MacBook Pro refresh. As usual, Apple did not give us in-depth information about the M2, but based on the data we did get and the die shots Apple provided, I think a first analysis is definitely possible. In this video, we will take a look at what's new with M2 and its performance claims, what Apple changed on the silicon level versus M1, and what all of that might tell us about the upcoming M2 Pro, Max, and Ultra chips. <laughs> Let's start by taking a look at the data Apple showed us. The M2 is built on over 20 billion transistors, which is a pretty hefty 25% increase over the 16 billion transistors in M1. And when we take a look at the die size comparison, it's pretty obvious this M2 is also quite a bit larger. Since both chips are based on TSMC's 5 nanometer process, more on that later, I estimate that the 25% increase in transistor count also results in a about 25% larger die size, give or take. So based off the 190 millimeter squared die of the M1, the M2 die size should be somewhere around 145 mm squared. This is a very rough estimate, but should come pretty close. If you believe the marketing slides, Apple put the extra transistors to good use. Apple claims a 18% faster CPU performance over M1, still using the same 8-core CPU setup. 4 cores for performance and 4 for efficiency. The GPU is getting 2 new additional cores, from 8 in the M1 to now 10 in the M2, and the result is a 35% performance uplift. Apple also claims a 100 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth that's 50% more than M1 had available. And last but not least, the redesigned neural engine is supposed to deliver 40% more performance with up to 15.8 trillion operations per second while still being a 16 core design. So let's put Apple's claim to the test and have a more in-depth look at the actual chip. The M1 GPU with its 8 cores is pretty easy to spot on the M1 die shot and it looks like Apple really just added 2 more cores to the M2 GPU. Going from 8 to 10 cores is a 25% increase and that's also exactly the performance number Apple provides when both chips are running at the same power, while the 35% performance uplift was achieved at a higher power draw. So 25% more GPU cores result in 25% more performance. These claims from Apple are a direct translation of what we can see on the silicon itself. But 25% more performance at the same power also means Apple achieved a higher efficiency. The question is how they achieved it. You can get better efficiency by creating a more efficient GPU IP, but I think the GPU on the M1 and the M2 are pretty much the same. Another way to increase efficiency is by using a more advanced process node. Apple claims that the M2 is based on a, and I quote, second generation 5 nanometer technology, which would explain the increase in efficiency over M1. I'm not sure if M1 was still based on TSMC's N5 node and M2 now made the switch to N5P, or if Apple is using a different 5 nanometer derivative. On paper, N4 is also a 5 nanometer design, but in this case, I think Apple would have called it 4 nanometers. Let's see if we get more info on the exact process node Apple is using, but Apparently, it's a more efficient node without any actual increase in transistor density. To be exact, the new node seems to be more efficient at higher power, but at the very low end, the M1 offers lower power consumption levels. This is apparent in both the GPU and CPU slide Apple's provided. Another important aspect for GPU performance is the memory bandwidth. M1 was using a 128-bit interface in combination with low-power DDR4X4266, which resulted in a memory bandwidth of 68 gigabytes per second. M2 is using the same 128-bit interface, but switches to faster low-power DDR5 6400. This should be especially helpful for gaming, and Apple is putting more and more focus on this area. They even showed Resident Evil Village running on Mac at the keynote. Next are the performance cores of the CPU. If you compare the P cores on the M1 die, we can clearly see the four individual CPU cores and the shared L2 cache in between. On the M2, not a lot has changed here, but the larger L2 cache is clearly visible. With M2, Apple increased the L2 cache size to 16 megabytes from 12 in the M1. Apple also claims the 18% performance uplift in multi-threaded CPU workloads, but this number also includes the E cores, which we will talk about in a bit. 
Aside from the larger L2 cache, the P cores look very similar to the cores on the M1. I expect Apple is using the Avalanche cores they introduced with the A15 design last year. We should see a slight IPC uplift and maybe some higher clock speeds due to the improved process node, but nothing groundbreaking, like a new ARM V9 design. On a note of groundbreaking, let's take a look at the Neural Engine. Apple is talking about a complete redesign with a 40% performance uplift while still using a 16 core network. On the M1, the Neural Engine sits right next to the performance CPU, with all 16 neural cores clearly visible. When we compare it to the M2, we can see a pretty substantial change in the design and layout of the neural engine. The M2 die shows two tightly packed clusters with eight cores each, and the cores themselves also look a lot different to the old neural engine on the M1. So Apple's claim of redesign is very apparent on the chip itself. It's obvious a lot of work went into this new neural engine, and it looks more tightly packed too. I'm curious to see how Apple approached their redesign and if we will see a similar focus on the neural engine in the upcoming A16 chip. Before we get to the efficiency CPU cores, let's take a quick look at the system level cache. The M1 packs 8 megabytes of cache into the SLC cluster right below the GPU. On the M2, the layout of the SLC has changed quite a bit, but it looks like it's still the same 8 megabytes of cache. I think the layout change could be a way to get it closer to the individual GPU cores in order to reduce latency and just adapt the layout changes to the GPU cluster in general. The CPU efficiency cores are still a lot smaller than the performance cores. On the M1, the 4 E cores are kind of asymmetrical clustered around the L2 cache, some cores being a lot closer to the cache than others. On the M2, the whole cluster has been changed. Now all cores sit a lot closer to the shared L2 cache. The M2 E cores are most likely based on the Blizzard design of the A15, which would mean that the E cores get a bigger performance uplift over M1 than the P cores. Coming back to the 18% multi thread performance uplift, the new E core should be responsible for a bulk of that number. The one thing I couldn't get located is the new ProRes DNN encode unit. The orange part I thought was the ProRes cluster, most likely is just the updated display engine. If anyone can locate the actual hardware cluster, please let me know. I always find it interesting to see how the marketing claims on the slides Apple is providing compare to the actual hard facts we can see on the silicon itself. M2 is clearly more an evolution instead of a revolution, but you shouldn't sell it short. Apple took the extra transistors they required to beef up the new M2 chip, and it's a step up over M2 in every way. The GPU gets two extra cores while hitting the same power consumption, not only resulting in more performance, but also increasing efficiency. The CPU performance and efficiency cores are most likely based on the latest A15 design, which means we will see better performance and more efficiency, but nothing earth shattering. The new engine actually got a complete redesign and Apple's impressive performance claims do seem to be founded in the actual silicon. I'm kind of disappointed that the system level cache seems to stay with the same 8 megabytes, but I'm sure Apple knows what they're doing. The only mysteries left now are where the new ProRes engine is hidden and what exact process node the M2 is manufactured on. Based off of the M2, the upcoming Pro, Max and Ultra SoCs are shaping up to be real big boys in terms of die size. The 20-25% to increase in die size may not seem like much, but if this transfers over to the larger Pro and Max designs, it starts to add up, especially for a possible M2 Ultra, which doubles everything of the M2 Max again. I think Apple is going to raise prices throughout, just like we saw with the new MacBook Air. With the delay of TSMC's 3 nanometer process, Apple has no other choice but to design larger chips, which in turn hurts yields and hikes production costs in an already overheated semiconductor market. I would like to read your own opinion on the M2. Do you think just spending more transistors to get better performance is the way to go? Or should Apple focus more on architectural improvements like they did with the neural engine? And are you considering buying the new MacBook Air even with the price hikes? Leave a comment down below. As always, if you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content and see you in the next video.